I should have never went to Qatar. I would have expected it to be people everywhere, but it's actually pretty calm arrival. But let's go out in the heat in Qatar, my fourth time in the country. I should have never went to Qatar. And that's not because Denmark went out of the group stage and was the biggest disappointment of the tournament. That's not the reason. Well, there's a very clear answer that I'm going to share with you. And I want to make it clear that everything on my World Cup trip has been self-paid and I haven't received any money from anyone. Therefore, I'll give you my honest opinion. Yeah. It's quite funny, every time you see a Denmark fan, you are immediately talking together, taking a photo video, because there are so few. And we have to stick together, the few Denmark fans here in Qatar. Let me tell you why I should have never went to Qatar. I'm from South Africa. My trip to Qatar reminded me of my world travels over the last 10 and a half years to 181 countries so far. One, two, three, viva Algeri! And the media constantly telling me to stay away from places. Stay away from Iraq, it's dangerous. Don't go to Afghanistan. Stay away from the beautiful Pakistan. Lots of criminals in Venezuela. Venezuela! And stay away from Africa. Ghana, Ghana and Ghana. If I have black color boss in my heart is Africa. I could have easily have listened to the media, but I would have missed out on so many beautiful experiences. So many wonderful people, the most incredible landscapes and so many unforgettable memories. I have been to all 19 provinces of Iraq, all 54 countries in Africa. I've been to Afghanistan and Venezuela, Libya and you name it. And all of it has been a positive surprise to me compared to what the media told me and what I saw on my television. I'm always curious to see the reality of things. I know all countries have plenty of good things and some bad things, mistakes, whether it's England, Germany or Qatar. And I know that every country is not in the same stage in their development. Some are further than others and that's how it is. People in lots of Western countries should be very careful giving morality lessons to other countries because of what our countries have done not that many years ago. Colonization, stealing and killing. We seem to forget the fact that in 1966, when England hosted and won the World Cup, it was illegal to be gay in England. Also, England buys 25% of their gas from Qatar. So we are really just a bunch of hypocrites for criticizing Qatar when we are supporting them so much economically. For sure, the Middle East has a long way to go on human rights and many social issues. But Western countries have their own issues too. We have a lot of things to deal with in our countries ourselves. And a lot of the criticism of the World Cup is steep in racism and Islamophobia. Also, I haven't heard anything about the state of Qatar, which evacuated more than 100,000 Afghan refugees, including students, teachers, activists, lawyers, medical professionals, artists and other after the Taliban takeover. And Qatar is paying for young females education and helping them to start a new life with hope. I don't think people in England and other countries should lecture a country like Qatar about laws or values. Given the way they illegally invaded Iraq 20 years ago, sparking two decades of ISIS terror, which broke my heart when I traveled three months around Iraq and saw all the destruction and killings which this decision caused. I saw the world's biggest graveyard in Najaf in Iraq with six million people buried there and it was honestly heartbreaking. A country like Iraq full of amazing Iraqi people. <laughs> Some of the most generous and friendly people in the world, but many of them lost innocent family members. Yet the media would portray these kind of people as dangerous. And also to mention the British Empire, which was much worse than you would expect. An empire which killed more than 100 million people around the world. So honestly, I don't expect the world's poorest country, Burundi, to do things the way we do it in Denmark. I respect their reality and where they are at a given time. They have different circumstances and it's different from Denmark. The same with Qatar. 
We are not the same country. Guys, where are you from? Qatar. And that's what makes the world beautiful. The fact that countries are different and in different stages of their development. Vamos Peru! Viva Peru! Viva Peru! And Qatar definitely has some things to work on regarding human rights and other topics, but we can also look at a lot of flaws in our Western countries that we choose to neglect when we criticize others. Qatar is in a learning process and things are getting better and better. Two years before I came to Saudi Arabia some years ago, women were not allowed to drive, but now they are much more free and can do pretty much anything. They can drive, go dancing, go camping, so it's a step-by-step -step process. But in the media, there's unfortunately always an evil head against the Arab countries. Back to football. There are 3.5 billion football fans around the world, and football is bringing the world together. In the West, we really have to let countries do things in their own tempo and not force politics into football. I don't like FIFA as an organization, and I'm against any kind of corruption. But what are we doing now? We are playing football in Qatar. No! Viva España! It's their culture, it's their country, and it's their laws that rule. Argentina! When I enter someone's home as a traveler, I always try to be extremely respectful. And I don't make any complaints that the toilet isn't clean, that my bed isn't made, or that dinner isn't ready at 6 p.m. like when we eat in Denmark. I became flexible. I embraced the differences and in the same way I want people who come to Denmark to be respectful guests and follow my country's rules, contribute in a positive way and not complain about my country. Therefore, I'm glad that we have platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram and Facebook where individuals can share the reality of what's happening at the World Cup. Otherwise, I'm afraid that the media would have liked to show you what fits their agenda and shown a wrong picture of the event. I am a fan of the fans. Sometimes there's another truth than what the media tells you. You always need to be critical. I got you down to you for Cameroon, bro. For I love it. It's so great. Three years. Three years. Is it good for you? Yeah, good. About the World Cup, I can say that I like the vibes, I like the atmosphere, and I like the people after having been here for 10 days. And it was great for me to see so many happy workers here and happy visitors. People proudly waving their flags from their countries with no fear and no shame. Side by side, with Arabs, with Asians, with Africans, with Americans, with Europeans, all together. Without the politics and the other BS, is for sure. Without the politics and the other BS, love can combine us and join us in peace and harmony. The Middle East have deserved the World Cup, and I can say from my experience that Qatar has been putting on a pretty good show. Good arrangements and hospitality, zero crime rate, you can roam outside safely any time of the night, all kind of food available, clean parks and free public transportation and metro service for all with a higher card. People are honest and friendly. There are matches on large greens everywhere for football fans, luxurious malls, open traditional markets, lots of events for the football fans. What else do you want? And also lots of areas for kids and activities for them to do. And most of all, everyone you ask here in Qatar and not on your TV are more than happy with the World Cup. India! What do you think about the World Cup being here in Qatar? I love it. Everything's close. Everything's... It's just... The culture is great here. It's a good vibe. Oh, wonderful. I'm not happy. I'm one the only side. <laughs> Loving it. I like. Great, guys. Really happy, it's awesome so far. Everything with the fan fest behind us. Great, yeah, dream come true. <laughs> yeah, we feel amazing. Uh, we like, like it very much. It's an unbelievable place and unbelievable to see in Wales at a World Cup finally. Fantastic. Do you like to be in Qatar? Qatar, good? Yeah, yeah it's nice. Uh, amazing. It's one of my biggest dreams. Beautiful country, beautiful weather. It's great to be here. I'm excited. It's my first World Cup. It's, it's great. I, uh, it's very organized. They worked so hard. It is really great. It's not easy to, to do this. It's really not easy to do this. I should have never went to Qatar because I found out about the beauty in humanity. I found out I have friends from all around the world. I found out that people are much more similar than we are different. And after having visited every Muslim country, I got just another confirmation that Muslims are wonderful and hospitable people that welcomes you, no matter who you are, as long as you follow the rules and regulations in their country, which is the same for every country, I suppose. It's really not that difficult. Some of the rules might be good, some of the rules might be bad, 
but respect the country you're in and say, okay, that's fine. I have done this thing exactly for 10 years of my travels and I have many traveler friends who are doing the same. Going to a country and say, okay, that's fine. I adapt to their rules. I'm a visitor here. Qatar hosted a really great, well-organized and trouble-free World Cup that deserves some respect. Politics has nothing to do with football. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's about experiencing the culture and not impose anything. Politics are something we all need a break from and let football be football. The most beautiful and the biggest sport in the world, uniting 3.5 billion people. What we have said from the beginning, we try to keep politics and football away from each other. Let football be football. Where there's unity, there's always victory. And remember that whoever you are, however you look, and whatever you believe in, try to always be a respectful guest in someone else's home. And that gives the respect and will for others to learn and to change. We are all human. Feel free to share the real message of love and friendship at the World Cup in Qatar. Let's celebrate football and each other. What do you think about the World Cup? Please comment below. Remember to subscribe to Gus on the Go. See you guys.